Well, hello everybody. Steve Green here with another Real Talk from Iron Vegan. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, Steve Green with you here once again, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about um, steroids and growth enhancement uh, strategies at Bill Pearl's gym uh, back in the 1970s. I've been asked about it a lot, about if people used um, performance enhancing drugs or th anything like that. But first I want to give a little background about me. Um, there's a, been a lot of new uh, viewers to the channel lately and so um, my name is Steve and I was born in the middle of the 20th century I'm 72 years old <laughs> and I started working out 1968 as a uh, teenager as a result of uh, a bully named Bob Fredericks who used to uh, push me around trip me put gum in my hair sneer at me call me names make fun of me you know, this kid was just, I don't know what his problem was. <laughs> but he was just a, a tall, skinny kid, but at the time, I wasn't fit or anything like that. So, shortly around that time, well, in high school, this is in high school, uh, a buddy of mine, Bruce Huner, is on the uh, varsity football team. <laughs> the guy was, a, he could uh, uh, bench press 425 and he was squatting. 465 as a senior in high school. But anyway, he started working out at a local YMCA. And then shortly after that, he f found out about uh, Bill Pearl's Pasadena Health Club. And he says, Steve, you need to come down here and meet Bill Pearl. And uh, <clears throat> you might want to start training here instead of the Y because the, the YMCA was kind of old and the, the weights weren't that up. You know, it was just kind of a minimal facility, but it, you know, it was enough to get started. Um, oh, and my first, in 68, my dad got me a three spring set with handles, you know, like stretch, like what you have uh, with bands nowadays, but they were like coil springs. <laughs> I remember one day I was doing curls with those at home and it slipped out from under my foot and <laughs> it came up and hit me in the chin. But, but anyway, so yeah, that's kind of how it started. Then in uh, 1970 or 71, I forget which it was, I, uh, it was 70, I guess, that uh, Bruce took me down, introduced me to Bill at the Pasadena Health Club, um, and uh, I I joined immediately. I mean, I could see that this was a, a great place, and I didn't know who Bill Pearl really was at the time. I was just starting to subscribe to Strength and Health, Muscular Development, and Iron Man magazines. They were actual physical magazines. They weren't things online. You know, they were real magazines. And so I was starting to learn more and more about this. And so Bill wrote me up routines and everything. And, and that's kind of, and so for most of the 1970s, nearly the entire decade, I trained there at um, Bill's gym. Um, for the first few years, I trained in the afternoon, got to know, uh, you know, Jim Morris and other people uh, that were training there in the afternoons uh, at, the, at the time. Jim Morris was 1973, uh, Mr. America. And so I was in this, um, um, oh, kind of a lifestyle there. It really was. I mean, you, you go in there and all the guys, and there were gals there too, but you know, mostly guys training in the morning and, uh, and in the afternoon, you know, and there were certain days that were lady days and all that kind of stuff. But, <clears throat> okay, you got to remember, as far as this these steroid usage, the performance enhancing drug thing, Back in those days, everybody got their news through magazines, okay? And so they didn't talk about drugs. They talked about these champion bodybuilders doing this exercise or that exercise, and drugs weren't really even mentioned. In fact, it was taboo. You just didn't talk about, uh, oh, yeah, I'm using steroids, you know? And it, so people, people nowadays, it, it's so common that it's talked about drugs on the internet. There, there was no internet. There was no Facebook or this online stuff where things were shared. You know, like, 
like like it is nowadays, where a lot of bodybuilders nowadays are actually openly talking about their their uh, performance enhancing drug cycles and what they're taking. Well, okay, there's this this thought that I've come across, and I've been asked over the years, like, were those guys, uh, you know, did Bill Pearl take drugs, uh, you know, and, and all this kind of stuff? Let me tell you, <laughs> it was the 1970s, and uh, the drugs weren't what they are today, but, you know, you had Diana Ball, little blue pills, five milligrams each. You had uh, Depo testosterone uh, injections, uh, Decadurablin, People just called it DECA. I mean, there were things back then that uh, it was being, sure, it was being used. Bill, Bill Pearl was on it, uh, on those things. I mean, these, these people, uh, bodybuilders are such that they want every advantage they can get. And so they do it. And it just wasn't talked about then. It was just the culture. You don't talk about that stuff. I've been asked about uh, Doug Brignoli. You know, Doug Brignoli, he, he started there at Pearl's uh, uh, shortly after I did, and uh, he was in his mid-teens. <sighs> yeah, he, he was uh, skinny as a stick initially, and, you know, Bill Pearl was relatively skinny too uh, when he started out, but that was years before I knew him. He had just was about to win his fourth Mr. Universe title when I joined the, the gym, or just after I joined the gym, he, he was doing that. So, yeah, you know, Bill used the drugs, Jim Morris used the drugs, um, Doug Brignoli used the drugs, and, <clears throat> gosh, you know, people think, well, you know, the, these guys don't talk about it. Bill didn't talk, talk about how all the drugs he was using in his big, thick uh, Keys to the Inner Universe book. And Doug Brignoli didn't talk about all the drugs he was using in his... Uh, the uh, Physics of Resistance exercise book. They just, they don't mention it, you know, and, and it was the culture at the time, and, and uh, you know, I mean, it, it's still in my mind, like, well, you don't talk about the steroids you're using or anything like that, you know. But, you know, like, with, with lately, I've heard a lot of stuff about Doug, you know, tricking people and things like that. Well, let me tell you something. The, the principles that Doug talks about... Uh, in his uh, book and on uh, the, the websites that he has, um, those principles work whether you're on steroids and drugs, performance enhancing drugs or not. The principles are solid, they work. And so the only thing that, that the performance enhancing drugs do is give you an advantage. It, 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 hastens your development. It makes you grow larger, faster. Um, so, like, all the principles in Doug's book, for example, I mean, this is what got me thinking about it, uh, to do this talk, because there's this talk going around about Doug, you know, but all those principles he writes about, and uh, and the, all the exercises in, in uh, Bill Pearl's book that I uh, helped him with for a couple years, all those exercises work whether you're on uh, performance-enhancing drugs of any kind or not. It's just a matter of how fast you will develop what you're trying to develop. That, that's all it is. The principles are sound. Both these men, the principles are sound. So you don't think, well, okay, Bill was on uh, performance-enhancing drugs and Doug was on performance-enhancing drugs. Therefore, their books are... are um, somehow dubious or, 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 or whatever. No, they're not. They're not. The, the drugs give you an advantage, yes, but the principles and how the physiology of the body works for Bill's and Doug's book, they're the same, and you'll get results, okay? You can either get your results naturally or you can get your results with the enhancement strategies of the drugs. That, that's basically what it amounts to. And like I, I did uh, for about a year, I uh, did um, Diana Ball and uh, Depo Testosterone there at Pearls. And I wasn't even looking to do it. I was getting, starting to get bigger and I was started entering contests. And I was approached in the gym. Like, hey, look at this. You know, 
we, we can get you some Diana ball here and, and you can do a lot better in a contest that you're going to be doing and all this kind of stuff. So it wasn't, I wasn't even looking for it. I mean, it was just kind of circulating around there, you know. I mean, if, uh, if the big guys saw you and you're, you were getting into the contest scene and you're, they could tell you're serious, you know, I just got approached. I don't, know, I don't even remember who it was that approached me in there, you know. But uh, I was approached. I wasn't looking for it. I just wasn't looking for it. It was just like, oh, I can? Okay. So I, so I tried it. You know, I, I uh, ramped up on uh, Diana Ball, a little blue um, pills, you know, five milligrams each. And you work, you, you work up your dosage over the course of a few weeks. And I worked up to where I was taking eight of those a day. That's 40 milligrams of Diana Ball a day after several weeks. And I started seeing results. I was taking a uh, intramuscular injection of uh, uh, depo testosterone in the butt <laughs> once every two weeks. And between the two of those things at the height, yeah, I could see a difference. You know, uh, my arms are up over 18 inches and all that kind of stuff. And, and so it's this big ego rush. There's no doubt about it. And so, yes, that stuff was was alive and well back then too. It just wasn't like it is today where bodybuilders are dying off at even faster rates than they were back then. You know, 26 years of age, uh, Dallas McCarver, you know, 42 years of age, Rich Piana, uh, 49 years of age, you know, um, these, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, you can see all the bodybuilders that died. John Meadows, he was 49, and, uh, and um, Mike Menser, he was 49, have heart attacks. The drugs nowadays are bringing on heart attacks, even though the cardiologist will look at your heart and say, well, your vascular system is clear, can't see any, any defects. There's something about, the, about these things that does affect your heart uh, in a way that cardiologists are not aware. They don't see it, and so they give you the green light. That's what happened to John Meadows. John Meadows had a heart attack one year, but he, he was cleared by his cardiologist and um, all, and he went back to it, and then the following year he had another heart attack, and it did him in. 49 years old. You know, I think about that. I'm 72. Would I have wanted to be dead back then? No. Fortunately, I didn't do the stuff I was doing for over a year. I got out of it. I realized... You know, Dave Johns was a friend of mine there at the, at the gym, uh, along, you know, with uh, Jim Morris, Bill Pearl and the guys, Chris Dickerson was there, Dennis Tenorino, a whole lot of guys like that. And Dave Johns died back during, and I, don't, I don't even remember what year, but it was back then sometime, and uh, bad news. And so I, I didn't do these things for more than a year, and I just did the two things I mentioned, and it was it was minimal compared to what what people think nowadays. The reason people are under this impression that the uh, the old school back in the seventies, for example, uh, was was nat all natural and drug free is because it just wasn't talked about. It's not that it didn't exist. It was it was there. It was there, and you didn't even have to go looking for it. If you started showing promise, somebody in the gym would come to you and say, "Hey, psh, you know." I can get you some Diana Ball here, and it'll make a big difference in your gains as far as the speed. You'll you'll get those gains faster. You'll start looking more vascular for your contests and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, but I'm glad that it only took me about a year of uh, I just realized this stuff is not going to be good for me over the long run, and so I got out of it. I got out of it. Got into it in my mid 20s. Got out of it in my mid 20s. You know, 12, 13 months was all it was, and, I, and I'm glad. And I've, I've been uh, totally 100% natural ever since then, with the exception of, of protein powders, you know, uh, that kind of thing. But uh, 35, 45, 55, 65, you know, like I've, I've been, haven't taken anything like that for almost 50 years now. So I would recommend against it. But to answer the question that I've been asked, Bill, Doug, the others, you know, Dave Johns, um, Dennis Tenorino, <laughs> he died I, not too long ago. He, he lived longer than a lot of them. But, uh, yeah, the drugs were there. They were just different drugs. They were plenty potent. They worked. 
the guys nowadays are just going nuts, you know, pumping a bunch of stuff into them. And... Anyway, we all make our own decisions, but I would advise not letting your ego get so out of control that you think you have to start living an unhealthy life uh, just so you can, you can get another um, three quarters of an inch on your arms. It's not worth it. Train naturally, folks. Keep it natural. You know, that's, that's my, that's my uh, message out of all this. <laughs> if social media and the internet existed back in the 70s, you would have heard about this stuff back then and there wouldn't be any doubt on people's minds. People wouldn't ask me like, what? Was everybody just natural back there in the 70s at Pearl's Gym and all that? No, 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 you know, same thing at goals, you know. So anyway, that's all I have to say. I'm starting to go in circles now. So take it easy, stay off the drugs, and I hope that answers your questions once and for all for those of you who are curious. All right, Steve Green, old man muscle, iron vegan, whatever you want to call me, signing off. You take care. Well, thank you once again for visiting the channel. If you like it, be sure and subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you know when a new one comes out. And remember to live long and finish strong through bodybuilding for health and longevity. See ya.